Full on time. Please welcome our chairman. David, the clock says two minutes past seven. What's gone wrong? <laughs> it, it wouldn't get on very well with me, wouldn't it, because he's a stickler for timekeeping, etc. So uh, we're going to start with tonight's prize draw for those of you who bought tickets. Paul, David, will you do us a favour? What's the deal here? Is we, we're just drawing that, are we? Yeah, anybody who bought four. Anybody who bought a strip, you're in the jug. And David's going to draw one out. David, it's a picture of you. <laughs> And some of your friends. <laughs> and the winner is Gentleman Unlucky. Helen Davis is not here. <laughs> Helen Davis? <laughs> it's been sold in here tonight. It's a cracking start. It says, Paul, you're fired. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a phone number. Oh, sorry, Helen Downs. <laughs> she is here. Paul, you're fired. Yeah. It's okay, I got fired two weeks ago. You're all right. Okay, I think we've got an hour and a half slated for this event this evening. I normally start by asking a few questions, uh, and it will be a very few tonight, because I'm sure we'll have loads from the floor. David, I'd like to ask the first question to you. Um, We've only got 13 points from 15. Are you entirely happy with the start? <laughs> okay, well, it's not bad. Uh, but it can be better, like always. No, of course, uh, we are happy. I think uh, we were able to see that uh, our preseason paid off, uh, some of the ideas we had. Uh, and for me, uh, the most important thing is uh, not only the points, uh, but uh, we nearly deserved every single point of, of, of the 13. Maybe against uh, Wolves we had this uh, kind of luck what you need if you if you like to have 13 points after 5 games. But uh, to be fair, I think uh, the Lens did an excellent job in the first 5 games. Are you a good coach, David? <laughs> <laughs> or, or are you a lucky coach? Because the substitutions... <coughs> First four substitutions, four goals, including a goal by a bloke who didn't actually know he touched the ball other than he felt it. <laughs> the equaliser at Villa, of course. You need a little bit of luck is where I'm going here, so we've had a bit of luck, but we've earned our luck, I think, haven't we, in these games. At Villa, we could have been out of the game at half-time, but we could have won it 3 or 4-1 because they only scored once. Yeah, that is right, but uh, uh, it didn't luck, so I said exactly to have, use your body. Said you like to score, and he did exactly what I said to him. So. <laughs> <laughs> You've been involved in some big clubs, big stages, mainly in Germany, of course. But St James's Park, first away game this season. We're forgetting about last season um, because last season you, you achieved what you, you came in to do to stabilise after a poor start and make the best of the squad you inherited. Now you said, give me a chance to pre-season, sign some players that I want, and let's see what happens. And of course, the start's been fantastic. But St James's Park, first up away, you must have thought, seen the fixtures and thought, Brentford, okay, we owe them one after the stuffing the game as the last game of the season. But then, big, big games. Newcastle away, and Villa Park, Aston Villa away. Now, first of all, I don't like to... Uh forgot the last season. I think uh, the last season or the, I don't know, six, seven months I was able to spend with the squad were very important for us and for our development because we were able to know each other uh, as good as we can. Uh, we were able to find out who is able to to work in our, our under regime, who is able to, to to bring our identity to our, uh, on the pitch, who is able to develop maybe. Uh, as, as quick as we think uh, that is important, so I think that the last season was very important for us because, uh, as I always said, it's very important to to keep the the good players, and we had a lot of good players in the last season in, in, in our club uh, um, with us for the future because consistency is a very big thing, uh, what you need to be successful, and so it was very important the last season. 
the schedule on the iPad was tough, uh, and at first maybe I thought, okay, uh, thank you for the start, but uh, when I thought long about it, I, I, I thought, okay, uh, Brentford uh, first game, great, so we can uh, put something right, uh, what we did wrong in the last game or the last season, and then the big, uh, the big guys uh, at the beginning of the season is always, I think, easier uh, than at the end or uh, uh, after a few months because, uh, and this was exactly what happens, uh, they don't have this harmony, they had some players in their dressing room they, they, which don't like to be there, uh, maybe some players were in the dressing room that the manager don't like, don't like to have there, uh, and, then the, and then they don't have this harmony and only with individuals, with high individual quality, uh, I think at the moment uh, um, you are not able to beat us. Uh, where we are a very strong uh, squad with a good togetherness. Uh, but when this good quality players that, uh, become uh, a real team, I think then they, they are uh, the best teams of the league, for sure. If you'd uh, just pass the microphone to Dean for a second, David. <coughs> Good evening. Only Good evening, <laughs> Dean. How are you? Um, I, I've got a question from the floor to start with, and it's from uh, somebody who's called D. Hoyle. And uh, he, he wants the answer that you gave him today. When he came home to get something from work that he'd forgotten to take to work, he said, Dad, I've got a question for you. Oh, I've given it away. Um, <laughs> why have you not bought a third striker, Dad? <laughs> and the answer you gave him? I'm not going to tell you what you gave him. Piss off, Daniel. But, uh, <laughs> no, um, David, to be fair, he didn't want the third strike. Is that right? That's just blame him, so. Yeah, simple as that. Um, <laughs> I didn't even see your lips move there, David. <laughs> no, no, I think like anything else, if the, if the third striker would have come available who would have fitted what we're about as a club, um, and we could have um, uh, purchased them at um, a reasonable price, but unfortunately, strikers and reasonable don't come together. Um, I know our opponents are satisfied with United, and then Milt Wheeler would say he'd liked, he would have liked these to assign a 20. Um, uh, 20 season striker, 20, 20, 20 goal season striker. Well, they're between 5 and 10 million pounds. So uh, these players aren't cheap. What we've got to do is work very smart and get people in that knack of old um, uh, in the early stages. Uh, people like Kashunga, who's proving to be a, a real asset, and that's how we've got to work. So it just didn't, didn't quite come right. And what we've got to be mindful of is yeah, ideally, the third strike would have been superb, but the ideal person was not available to complement the squad. and. You know, this squad is not about one chance to window, it's about two and three and four. And um, you know, we've got a great start, but there's lots more to develop. That wasn't the answer Daniel <laughs> said you uh, <laughs> <laughs> gave it at home, but there you go. David, sorry. Can, can I give Daniel an answer? Oh yeah, give Daniel an answer. <laughs> so that's Daniel Ryan. To be fair, it wasn't uh, never about the money. I, I never ask for a third striker because I don't think that we need one. So uh, I only have one position in in most of the uh, games um, in our idea, in our identity, in our system. So I only have one position for a striker, uh, and this means it's only uh, able one player, one striker to play. Sometimes maybe not. So we play with uh, Naki Welch and Kashuka, but this will normally not happen. Uh, every weekend, and then the, the question I have to ask: What should I do with the striker? So when then he's on the stand uh, or on the bench. Then I have two strikers on the bench. Uh, he's uh, unhappy. I have problems in the dressing room. Though it makes in our system, it makes I think no sense uh, to have a third striker. Only if you say, okay, uh, I don't think about. Uh, all the trouble in the dressing room, and I don't think about the money who is only on the stands, but not on the pitch. So it makes no sense, I think, in, in, in our in our system uh, to have a, a, a third striker. Mm. Touch wood. Of course, it's a risk uh, because we have to make sure 
uh, that everybody is fit and available, but uh, if the normal scenario happens, uh, then we have a third striker without any minutes over the season. So I never thought about a, a third striker. Uh, what I think about is uh, how can we maybe um, have higher quality in our academy than we have this third strike in our academy where we can say, okay, there is uh, a 19, 18 years old striker uh, that maybe can be our third striker. And to be fair, uh, Rekil is on a good way uh, in our academy. Uh, and this is more what I'm thinking about then, rather than uh, to buy a third one. So next next time you can meet me here, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we can speak about this face to face. <laughs> David, if you're uh, if you Huddersfield Town head coach for a long time, and that's the next chairman of Huddersfield Town. <laughs> 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 David, stay, keep the microphone for a second, um, because I think now um, I've uh, met all the German players and the Slovakian players and. Is there a poll? There isn't a poll, is it? The oh, I'm a Slovakia player. Where, where is he from then? Sorry. Slovenian. Where's... Slovenian, sorry. <laughs> That's him as well. Thank you. Um, so, all of them have been honest in saying that either they've never heard of Huddersfield or Huddersfield Town, or those who had heard of Huddersfield Town knew nothing about Huddersfield Town and would not have a clue where it was on the map of England. Um, how have they settled in, these boys who a few months ago knew nothing of Huddersfield, knew nothing of where we are, and uh, and taken us to where we are now. Uh, I can say all of them are settled in very well. And of course, uh, if you come in a, a, a successful club uh, with a positive atmosphere, uh, where everybody has the feeling, okay, we start a journey and we now on, on, on our journey, we, we Improve, we do some steps forward, it makes much more easier to settle in. So all of them, uh, and this don't depends, uh, are they starters or not, uh, they settled in, uh, they have now uh, their families with, with them, the ones who has families, the other ones searching for... <laughs> they could be very popular. In <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, they, they settled in once. I think, um, as always, it's for them as, as well only the beginning of uh, uh, to settle in, but the first steps are, uh, are done. And you're insistent that everybody you signed would speak English so that you could always use English on the training field, in the changing rooms, match days, non-match days, and on the field of play we would always communicate in English. And uh, to be fair, I think some of the English lads will struggle to understand <laughs> the Germans' good English. <laughs> they all speak very, very good English for footballers. Yeah, for, for, for footballers, it's important. <laughs> <laughs> or for Germans. <laughs> for German footballers. Well, I don't know about German football, but certainly for footballers, definitely. I mean, the media manager's looking at me as if I shouldn't be disrespecting the rest of our squad, I can assure you. Uh, but they do, they speak impeccable English, which has really helped them to settle into the area, I think. But not just that, they're so confident when they're doing things like this, where you're sat now, and in the White Rose Club, etc. Um, just almost naturals. Yeah, this was never, never a question. So, uh, in our first meeting, when we came together at the first day of the pre-season, we said, uh, the main language in this club is English, uh, so there is only one language we are speaking here in this environment and this is English, uh, so there was never a question about this. Uh, this is very easy because we all together know that this is a, the in, in English, a British club, uh, where, where, where English is the main language and uh, their English develops as well. Uh, and when we uh, will have our player leaders on in, in the future with us, we will make sure that they get some English lessons as well. Uh, I think uh, the language is a, is a main reason, the, the most important thing to settle in as, uh, as quick as you can if you come in, in a new country. And um, when they made the decision to make this big step, and I think uh, maybe uh, some one of you uh, did it uh, to, to leave your home country for, for, for a few years, uh, I think this is a big step to leave your home country, your family, your friends and uh, try to start a new life in a new country. So I think we all together should never forget uh, what, what kind of a big step they did. 
so they were very uh, brave to do this, uh, and uh, I'm very happy that they are happy uh, with this with the step they did. But you like to keep in touch with your roots at home, don't you? Because just last Friday you took your team to play against your mate again. <laughs> <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I don't think he did, though. <laughs> no? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm just going to continue with it and say that um, when most town fans knew it was happening, we didn't understand the purpose. Of course, we played most of our fringe squad, I think, with some of the lads who played as well. Anybody who wasn't on international duty was fit. And Jurgen did the same for the Liverpool. So we were playing against a team which included internationals who weren't currently in squads, strikers who cost £30 million, pounds, and uh, we went over there and beat them then. No surprise. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was a test. Uh, but uh, to be fair, I was very happy with this test, so uh, I, I often enough uh, played such games uh, and then it was only uh, Oh, to, uh, a game on the beach, or when, when they are on the beach. <laughs> so it looks like that they are on the beach yeah, when, when, when we play Dutch games. And this game was a very intense game, uh, a very good tempo. Uh, both managers uh, wanted uh, to lose this game, um, <laughs> or didn't want to lose this game. Uh, so uh, that was intense and at the end. Uh, okay. You always like to win games, uh, test matches as well. And if it's against your mate, uh, it makes you happy. <laughs> <laughs> and just for the record, no injuries came through okay that day, or did we have any problems? No, no problems. So, uh, Naki unfortunately missed this game because he uh, got an injury uh, in, the, in the last training before, before this match. But it wasn't so serious, so he was back in training uh, yesterday and today. Uh, so we have the food squad together, Aaron Moy came back today uh, from, uh, from Australia International uh, Games, uh, so the only player we missed at the moment is uh, Joe Lolly, uh, everybody else is available. The Aaron Moy story is just, uh, well I don't know what you think guys, but I think it's brilliant. <laughs> it's, it's, it's marking on ridiculous mm -hmm. that Manchester City, arguably the wealthiest club in the world now, sign a player from their sister club in Australia, he gets here, they get on the telephone to us and say, we've got this international footballer that we've just paid millions for, we'd like him to come and play for you. Uh, he plays pretty well for us thus far, and then he flies to Perth last, last Sunday or Monday, and then he flies from Perth to Abu Dhabi or Oman, wherever the next international was, and then is back here in Huddersfield. We're, we're used to lads from Far Town getting the bus down there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's slightly different, David, these days for Huddersfield Town fans. Yeah, uh, he's Australian, <laughs> <That's> English, <laughs> so he's able to come from point A to point B <laughs> without any problems. Now, Aaron, Aaron is. Uh, he. He is a very, very good player, and I think uh, everybody was able to see in the first uh, five or six games now we had together uh, that he is able to to give a really step on uh, on our game uh, when he is um, in a good performance. What he um, mostly was, uh, he is uh, yeah one of one of the signings. I I, I have to be honest. Uh, the name is from Stewart. Stuart Weber gave me the name uh, when we when we said uh, this will be a position where we have to uh, replace uh, Emir Yus uh, from last season. And then uh, I watched some clips uh, and I liked him. And to be fair, Dean was uh, as well one of the uh, the, the people uh, who always said, "Oh, yeah, think about him. He's good." <laughs> And you always have to listen if you're the chairman. <laughs> no, uh, so I'm, ve I'm very happy that we uh, that we were able to sign him. And of course, it's a sign that, um, and maybe the the, the Ben Chilwell loan helped, uh, which suits uh, all of us uh, us 
Ben and, and, and Lester that uh, Man City was very interesting uh, to give him a loan to us and not to other club. And uh, we have a similar situation with with Casey Palmer, where Chelsea was very interesting that he uh, he plays for 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 Huddersfield Town and not for uh, another. Uh, a club in the championship, and I think uh, this is a big compliment for for, for, for our club that uh, such uh, yeah big clubs, most um, some of the biggest clubs in the world, ask ask to to help to develop their their talents, and um, if it pays off like it did at the moment, uh, um, that they perform, that they help us, that we are successful, uh, we can make this in the future as well. Dean, please. Dean, ten years ago, you were sat on the kill in the bank, and you were pretty frustrated, like most of the good people sat in front of you, with what you were watching in the blue and white stripes. So you, you took a bit of a plunge, and when you took over, a bit of a fanfare, hundred pound season tickets, great start, and then we we sort of plateaued a little bit. It took us a little while to. To I think effectively buy our promotion almost because yes. we were spending a lot of money for the league, the third tier. Um, but ten years on, did you really, in your wildest dreams, expect that a Manchester City and Chelsea wanted to lend us their what they consider their stars of the future, and we'd be sat unbeaten and top of the uh, the second tier? And uh, as long as we stay there for another seven months, we'll get promoted. <laughs> No pressure. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. Um, I don't think you're going to go back 10 years. Let's just go back 13 months. I think it's been um, uh, transformational. But at the same time, we had to. Football is a really interesting game where uh, there's lots going on behind the scenes, and uh, managers and coaches are very difficult to deal with. Um, I've got deer in front of me. I think what I ever wanted in a coach, the hard work, and I think we had the hard work with Lee Clark, um, but I think David's got so much more about him than I'm not your contract to come up here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think at the same time, I think when David came in, um, it was very impressive. He told us the, 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 how he would like to do things. Um, I backed him, um, and I think everybody, not just the players, but the staff, <coughs> have all bought into what he wants to do and the players, sorry, the staff who didn't mind what he wanted to do are on the merry way to other clubs now. So we've taken some major stages, uh, steps, um, not from myself, we've taken the gamble. Um, I think you asked me the question last week, David, why did you take the chance on me? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but that's it. It's a real tough one and I don't think I can really say the reason why we set David on. I think it came over fantastic in the interview. We needed um, uh, a step change. David told me he could deliver um, uh, uh, things, but that may not lead to success, but this is what he firmly believes in. And I think for me, what I'm really proud of um, is that we, um, they always talk about David and, and, and Jürgen, but we, we um, sent David on off, offered David a job before Jürgen um, uh, got off the Liverpool job. Or, you know, I think that's, we're not just going on the back of the pool's shirt tails, we're doing our own thing. So for me, um, yeah, we do really well. Um, uh, you shouldn't look at the table until 10 games, but I look at it four times a day. <laughs> uh, I think, which way was it? No, <laughs> um, But at the same time, um, I think anybody who has, and I'm trying not to get too excited, I've got to keep my feet firmly on the ground, but at the same time, uh, and I've asked David this question, how good are we? Well, we don't really know, do we? At this early stage, we, we don't know. Um, uh, we'll see, but I think uh, what we've seen up to now with um, uh, fitness organisation, the pleasure recruiter, it all goes very well, and let's just keep our feet on the ground, be like David is saying, let's be humble, um, let's work really hard. And my, my saying always is, if you work hard, you might get lucky. And that's what we're going to try and do. Keep that microphone, please. You said, um, you said very early in that answer that um, you're trying not to get too excited. Well, I sit almost directly behind you, Dean Hoyle, in the stand. <laughs> no, and no, I, 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 I can tell no. you that you weren't calm when... Uh, 
Casey Palmer scored within two minutes of coming on. And when Jonathan Hawk, who normally, David, when he shoots, it's the top row of the other team. His first goal since January 2009 in any league football. Almost a miracle. Um, when Jonathan Hawk scored, Dean, we nearly did need your son to be chairman because I thought you were going to take your last breath at that point. <laughs> I'll slightly disagree with you. I think I've been calmer and more balanced this year. <laughs> I'm gonna video you. That's what I'm gonna do. No, no, I think I've been probably I, I believe I've been more balanced this year. I think um, um, yeah, we've been really excited. We've had we, 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 we had some great results. I think we've got what 13 out of um, 15 points. I told the we must get 16 out of 18. <laughs> <laughs> After that, it doesn't matter. <laughs> David does know we cannot lose. That's it. Uh, otherwise, I'll just sack him. Uh, sorry, wrong club. Uh, All I can say is we're keeping our feet firmly on the ground. If we're going to be successful this season, then we're going to have to have more luck, we're going to have to work even harder. Uh, but I just look at the team now, and I think we're different. I think the attitude, the fighting spirit, the way we come back from games, the organisation, the calmness, I just think it's completely transformational from what we've had before. And I think David and his team, they've got to take an, an awful lot of, well, all the credit I suppose, but um, yeah, it, it, it's... It's good. I'm, I'm nearly starting to enjoy it again. <laughs> I'm looking for questions from the floor. Let me just tell you what's going to happen. I want you to uh, say your name, please. I want to, you to tell me who the question is going to be for. And if I don't think the people at the back may have heard the question, I'm going to repeat it. So, uh, the gentleman there, who was a regular in Canal Side. Yes, sir. PPG Canal Side. Sorry. John Wallace. Um, you introduced two afternoon training sessions per week, at least two. Do you know of any, which is obviously proving its worth, do you know any other club in the championship that trains in an afternoon, or in the premiership for that matter? The question is to David, it's about double training sessions. Is this unique in English football? I suspect it might happen at a place called Melwood that we visited yeah. last night. <laughs> uh, but perhaps apart from those two places, who knows? David. Uh, to be fair, uh, on one side I can say I'm not uh, experienced enough in, in, in British football, but on the, uh, to be honest, I'm not very interesting uh, what other clubs <laughs> do. So uh, for me it's only important what we do. And, uh, yes, we, we do double sessions, uh, often twice a week, on Tuesday and on Wednesday, uh, for sure always on Tuesday, uh, at 11 and at 3 o'clock, and we always have training uh, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when it's kickoff at 3 o'clock, or if we have a late kickoff, then we have as well training uh, later than 3 o'clock. Um, Again, I'm not sure uh, who else in, in England uh, will do this. Uh, I know that Liverpool uh, uh, does this. Uh, but for me, where, where I grew up, uh, this is uh, totally normal. So if you have your competition, uh, your challenge on a weekend at 3 o'clock, then you have to work at 3 o'clock. So anything else makes no sense. I don't have to study sports science to understand uh, that this is uh, something what you have to do, so um, this is what we do, and uh, I, I know now after our testings and our retests uh, as well, black and white, that we are very fit, uh, maybe one of the fittest teams in, 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 in the championship, uh, but to be fair, I, 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 I thought that I know this before because when I watched the games and I, I thought that we are always, or nearly always able to to change the game <coughs> in the last 15 minutes or that we are often able to score in the last 15 minutes I think this is uh, a small uh, uh, sign uh, that you are fit and uh, I think I, I, I said this before uh, it is as well very easy as more as you work as fitter you get uh, so for this I don't have to sport, study sports science as well and this is the only thing we do so if you if you will go 
uh, eight times a week for half an hour outside uh, jogging, uh, you will be fitter uh, than you always only will do it uh, four times a week. Uh, after four weeks, you will be fitter if you do it eight times. So, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> and David, just to answer that, when we have an evening game next Tuesday at Brighton, yeah. we try and have an evening training session. But when you're playing away next Tuesday, how will that work? Will we get the evening session on the Monday night as you would for a home game on Tuesday? No, we, uh, uh, next week we are able to make uh, the evening session uh, uh, late as well because uh, Dean begged us uh, that we are able to fly to Brighton, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we are able to... 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 to uh, to stay in our schedule, he did this, but we are able to stay in our session. So I think I'm we. <laughs> I invited you to fly back with us. Uh, yeah, I think we have training uh, at six. Uh, then we have dinner here uh, at seven fifteen. Then we drive to Brentford, uh, Brentford uh, Airport, and then we fly back, and then we arrive at the, at the hotel. I think uh, at ten. Um, we need snack. Go to bed and uh, Tuesday morning we have training again. A light training session, uh, some video meetings before this training, and a uh, late video meeting uh, in the afternoon. Then we take a walk and then we drive to Brighton and uh, fight for the three points. The front row here, I've got a hand up there somewhere. Like, yes, sir. Um, Alan Smith, loving the football. I think he's absolutely brilliant. For the first time in years, I think I'm really, really enjoying my football again with other school. However, my question is uh, about bookings. Obviously, early doors, we've picked up a lot of bookings. Is it inevitable in terms of the style of football that we play? Have you any concerns about it? Do you think they're being fair? Alan Smith's asked about bookings after <laughs> telling David he wants to marry him, I think. Just <laughs> He said uh, he's enjoying his football for the first time in years, etc. Like many fans, they uh, hear that a lot these days. Uh, but it basically about bookings. Is it the style of football, and are you concerned with the number of bookings we've picked up so far? Um, no, I'm not concerned about the numbers of our bookings. I think this is part of the game. Um, this is why we have uh, our squad together, that we are able to react if we have to react because of uh, suspensions. Of course, our style is aggressive, like a terrier is, is intense, uh, is quick, and uh, yeah, sometimes uh, maybe you are the second too late, and then it's a foul and you get a booking. Uh, I'm worried about bookings uh, when you shout with a referee or uh, you make some stupid uh, things when you kick the ball away. But for this, we, uh, we find our players. Uh, <laughs> And this hopefully will not happen too often. But if it happens, then, um, we get some money. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, guys. The lady there, yes. Uh, well, uh, question to Dean. Um, thank you for the um, work done with the season card this season. What are the plans going into next season in terms of whether the, the prices will increase with that? Deborah Barnes asked Dean whether or not the season card off was likely to continue next year. I, I'll answer, and if we get promoted, you've no chance, love. <laughs> <laughs> I think if we get promoted, they go down to hundred quid or something. Don't they? Yeah. 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 No, I think um, it's been a great success this season. I'll just pick up on the point David said earlier. Do you notice he said we're flying from Bradford Airport, but Leeds never got mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> Rapper there, Paul. International. I would say um, we've got to be realistic. Um, I think the crowd has definitely helped the team. Um, obviously, the team have got to give something back for the reciprocate. But to me, it's really worked. Um, We'd be, we'd be daft to put the prices back up to what they were normally and we've got to keep this going and like David said now what's important is to try and keep this momentum going and it's not just into this season, it's into next season and we've kind of rejuvenated and kind of reborn if that kind of makes sense so for me 
and we have got to um, put them at a level where we retain the interest in the football club. Dean, you, it's, it's had a massive amount of positive publicity, the season card for us, yeah. all three price brackets. When you go to visiting boardrooms, do other club owners and chairmen think you've lost the plot completely? Yeah. Because they, they'll know how yeah. difficult and how expensive it is to run a football club at the championship level. And do they just sort of look at the numbers and just think that this is a road to nowhere? It's, it's, it's a real weird one actually, because not one chairman has ever asked me, in, in, even if you go back to the £100 ticket office in the centenary season, not one chairman has ever asked me about the income generated by doing tickets cheaper. You know, what, what, so to me, they're not particularly interested. And I think the problem is the football, um, it, it's kind of fleeced the fans in the wrong way, but that's what really happens. Um, but it's not what we're about, is it? You know, I think we've tried a different route with trying to um, charge X, Y, Z in, in, in a few years gone past, and you know, the, the, the cheap tickets to get people interested. And the amount of people who come up to me and say, you know, I first came to my first game when we had a school promotion, and I took my dad, and we're here together now. We've been here for the last five years. So, for me, it's about um, it's about the price. If you get the price right, people will come. Obviously, if they're going to be entertained, which they are doing now. But we say, whilst we're at the top of the division, or we're in, we're in the top um, 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 few places, then this is as good an opportunity as we're going to ever have to actually um, embrace the support and get more people through the, through the door. So, yeah, unfortunately, the chairman don't have that much interest, but, but that's like it. David, the prices in Germany are much more affordable than for English football. So the prices we're charging here at Huddersfield Town for you is probably normal in Germany. It's just that everybody else in England does differently. I think Bayern Munich are famous for having cheap tickets. And I think also Dortmund, your, uh, your previous club. I think uh, the season tickets offer here, uh, we don't have in England, uh, in, in Germany. So this is uh, a very special price uh, which Dean offered. Uh, in this season. But yes, uh, the, the, the tickets are cheaper in, in, in Germany um, and the, the stadiums are full in Germany as well. So uh, I think uh, I think in the first Bundesliga where 97% uh, uh, sold out on average uh, over the whole season, uh, this shows that uh, the supporters base paid back uh, if you give them the chance to support your club. And, uh, as I said before, I think we, we, we did some steps uh, in, in the past and this was a big step that we are able to have nearly 20,000 uh, in the first games. Uh, hopefully uh, QPR, uh, we will beat the 20,000 again because uh, I'm not sure if everybody knows how, how big uh, the influence uh, of, a, of, a, of a big crowd uh, is for, for the players on the pitch, especially in, in in our style of a game, where you need this push from the outside, sometimes in the in the most important minutes, uh, and uh, again, I think uh, Wolverhampton the last ten minutes against Wolverhampton uh, were outstanding. Uh, I'm totally sure that this was uh, a big reason that we are able to to beat them and to come back into the game uh, after we lost the control after half time. Uh, so uh, I wasn't happy with the. Uh, 25, 30 minutes after half time, but uh, at the minute when, when when the supporter came back and it was a whole stadium, all four stands, uh, clapped their hands and stand up and, 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 and helped, really helped the players on the pitch. Uh, this was uh, something outstanding uh, in the last 10 minutes and helped us to get the three points. So uh, credit to, to everybody who helped us uh, in this games and in the others as well. But this, this 10, 15 minutes were, were something special in my opinion. I think we've got a question following up from that. Yes? Hi, Richard Schofield. Uh, the, you don't have to flinch from the year, year of Schofield, but carrying on from that, and I've got to say the commercial department this season have been amazing. Yeah. And that's just looking, I mean, I can't go on Facebook without seeing Sean's face. Are you saying that's amazing? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> on Twitter or whatever, it's all out there. You supported us. I don't want to use those three initials because I personally aren't. But everybody here is a town fan, it doesn't matter whether you sat behind one goal, killing a bank or whatever. 
But having been in the North Stand, and this is what is now the South Stand, it's not ultimately your decision, there's other people involved, but how we're pushing towards getting David's wish of having a North End. The question from Richard Schofield, I'm not sure exactly what he means, but he said you've no need to be frightened, this is a Schofield, so there's a story or two there. I'd move if you sat over there, that's my advice. <laughs> um, but the question is, um, effectively, any chance of having what is currently the away end as a home end? Are we pushing for it as a club? That was basically the nuts and bolts of the question. Yeah, we are pushing for it, and I think um, uh, David first recognised it, it's really something we uh, it, it's paying dividends. And don't underestimate when David said the. Uh, I actually thought the South Stand were pretty quiet against Barnsley. To be fair, I, I thought I thought they were pretty quiet. But regarding against Wolves, I think they made the, 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 they really stepped up to the mark. And I think especially it's okay singing and cheering when two or three know. But we actually need it, like David said, we had to stick it. 20, 30 minutes against Wolves, the crowd got behind, and if you go back to another scenario where the South Stand would have been 3,000 full of Wolves and the Oversfield fans behind, um, we'd have had uh, 10, 11,000 there, um, doom and gloom, then probably Wolves would have taken all three points. So I think it's a combination, I think the crowd really stepped up. But going back to your first point, yes, we are working hard towards it, and I think the key World Cup in HD1 because with the reconfiguration of the outside and the road network, that is an opportunity that the board of directors are really pushing um, the KHDL and the council and everybody on to try and get the away fans housed in a north stand. So that is something we're really working hard, um, hard towards. And we're also trying to work hard to reduce segregation as well. At the moment, we have lots and lots of seats. We've been trying to ask them why. So um, we're working really hard and don't think we're not because we we do feel it makes a big difference to us. Dean, moving logically on from that, a lot of fans are wanting to know what may or may not happen when we play Sheffield Wednesday coming up now on a Sunday lunchtime, so less of an issue you would have thought with people turning up drunk for a 12 o'clock kickoff on a Sunday want to have a good look at themselves perhaps, don't they? But, um, and I know there's a few in here who will be drunk. <laughs> um, but we've also got three games this season, Mainly not until post Christmas, February's marches, yeah. our, our friends from Holbeck and Beeston, of course, Newcastle United and Aston Villa. Um, the likelihood of those being split as they have been so far, or is it too far ahead to know about these things? I think um, logic in my head is it's too far, it's too far to uh, find out, but at the moment we're doing really well. I think the South Stand is contributing. Um, we're, we're after five games, we're doing exceptionally well and want to keep it going. Same with the clap banners, we really want to carry on. And for me to say um, against Wolves, then let's get Wolves, all that standard, it, it's trying to break the habit. So we're, we're in a really good place. Uh, I'm a little bit superstitious. I want it to carry on. But regarding Sheffield Wednesday, Newcastle, Leeds, we've got to see where we are. Um, if we want to limit them, we can do. But that will probably depend on where we're in the division. If, we're, uh, if we fall away, then you've got to think about revenue to help David push on the season after. If we're up there, then you've got to think we've got to do everything possible to help us drive harder. So, too early to say, I suppose it's really after David. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it all boils down to you, Herr Wagner, doesn't it? <laughs> Next question, guys. We've got one from there, we'll get from the cheap seats. Yes, sir. I'm not sure Dean will know the answer to that, but I presume it's for Dean, not David. Um, have you any idea why we get 2,700 tickets for Leeds? Is it just the natural capacity of that area? Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think the football rules are quite simple. I think you've got to give 10% um, or 2,000. That's it. So Leeds could um, effectively just give us 2,000. That's what they want to do. Um, that's their prerogative. Just like it's up to us if we really want to. We could give Leeds United 2,000 tickets when they come to us. Uh, I'm not saying I'm going to do that. Yeah. 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 Down to David. But, <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, don't underestimate the financial sacrifice it is doing what we are doing. You know, um, it probably cost the club £30,000 to, to restrict Wolves. If we restrict Leeds or Newcastle, it could be forty, fifty, sixty thousand 60000 So, uh, there is a financial sacrifice, but while things are going well on the field of play, 
you want to do everything you can to support it as well. So it, it, it's the balance we're building in, but Leeds can do 2,000 or 10%. They can do what they want. Uh, I think with Leeds United as well, at Elland Road, I think they give you the, what, the West Stand, the Old Stand now, because that's the highest ticket price in the ground, so uh, they can justify charging the high prices because it's the same in that stand. So, um, and before you say, well, aren't we a bit rich with this? Uh, I, did, I did find this out tonight because I wanted to make sure I knew what I was on about. That um, we, we can charge absolutely whatever we want for the stand, the South Stand for away fans, um, within reason, because of course nobody. A town fan has not paid to go in there this season, there's been no charge on the door. Yeah, but at the same time, our morals, you know, there's lots of what Nigel talked about, but integrity, respect, I think whatever Leeds United do, um, you know, whatever happens on the field of play, I think us as um, directors and US supporters can take the moral high ground that we're a damn sight better run club than they are. And, you know, just because they want the shaft of the time, she doesn't want to do the same with them. Um, so I think that's where we need to be, to be fair. Yeah. So, uh, Next question. Uh, Dean, uh, John Pickford is only sadly just one downside to, to that to the scenario we're talking about. We're, we're never going to see the stadium full this season if, if, if we keep winning. If we keep winning, we'll never see the stadium full. John, Pick I'm sorry, no. uh, John Pickford asks that the stadium will never be full, Dean, if we uh, continue with that policy. I presume he means that everybody who transfers in on match days. Um, if we get close to selling out, I presume everybody will need to transfer pre-match day to re release their seat that they bought for the season as becoming available to sell. Yeah, quite simple. We played Newcastle United maybe six or seven weeks ago. Um, uh, uh, we're first, they're second. Um, <laughs> anybody who goes to the South Stand will have to um, uh, pre book their seats so we can sell theirs. So, if we ever get to that issue, it, it, it's not a problem. So, yeah, we could see it full, not full at all, but we can control that. Yes, front row. Mark Slater, it's for David. Um, you're currently happy with all your players you've got. I mean, we've got a cracking squad at the minute, can't fault it. Any news on Philip Billing coming back in? Is he going to be going out on loan when he comes back or will there be a space for him? Mark Slater quotes that David's very happy with his squad and asks specifically about Philip Billing, when he's available, will he be involved or will he go out on loan somewhere? I don't think he can go on loan now. It's the answer until Christmas, but there you go. Uh, no, there is no chance to go on loan uh, for him. Uh, at the moment and uh, it isn't in my head to give him on loan. What I like to hear for him, uh, from him is uh, that he, that he uh, accept the situation uh, that he has uh, to compete uh, for a place in the team. And, uh, he came in the, in the preseason good, uh, strong, then he uh, got an injury, an uh, ankle injury and he was out for two or three weeks. And uh, the, uh, since this uh, time, um, he isn't uh, um, the feeling he, that he was before. Uh, what on the other side maybe is uh, usual, because uh, after such an injury you need some time, but on the other side um, he has to make the step uh, from uh, uh, academy player to a senior player, and this is uh, to be a competitor. And, uh, what I like to hear from him, and I have spoken with him very honestly in the last week, uh, that he fights uh, for his uh, position and don't wait uh, that he get the position. And uh, I think this is something he has to learn and he has to develop. He is still a great talent, uh, unbelievably good talent. Uh, but now we have the situation, uh, and this for me is a sign that our squad is stronger than it was before. Uh, that every single player has to, to really fight for his uh, position in every single training and um, it's, it's up to me to help him uh, to make this step but this is a step uh, I expected from him. Thank you. Yes, I recognise that uh, good haircut, Richard Cosmala. <laughs> Cozy asks, at what point do the team know who selected? When do you announce the team? Is it Thursday, Friday, Saturday morning, Saturday lunchtime, half past two? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Three o'clock. 
<laughs> it is uh, official. It is um, one o'clock. So one o'clock. Uh, we had uh, we have our last meeting uh, in the in the hotel, uh, and in this last meeting, uh, I give official uh, uh, to the players a starting eleven. But to be fair, uh, often uh, in the training on Friday. Can get a feeling if you will be, if you will be a starter or not. So um, unofficial Friday in training, uh, they they know if they will start or not. But official uh, on Saturday. Sometimes uh, overnight, as a manager, you get some crazy ideas and then you change something. <laughs> Especially around October fest time. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next, guys? Yes, in the door with that bright shirt on, young man. Yes. Uh, James Robinson, uh, question for Dean. I was reading an article last week on a little known website called BBC Sport uh, about Jake Charles that he was sold to Barnsley for two million pounds. Is that true? <laughs> James Robinson asked a question to Dean saying that the BBC Sport website last week said that Barnsley had paid the small figure of £2 million for Jake Charles. Can you confirm? If this is true, I'd like to have a third striker. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true at all. Uh, Jake has gone to Barnsley to trade his career because he, he, he stalled here. Um, and hopefully he can go to Barnsley wish him well and then uh, he can kick on. Uh, but it wasn't happening here for him for whatever reason. Uh, it was nowhere near the first team. And David needs players of his age to push him first team uh, opportunities. And it's as simple as that. So good luck to him. And uh, let's hope he makes it. Don't believe everything you read, even on the BBC, James. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, John Robin, it's a question for David. Have we got to wait for suspensions or injuries before we see Michael Effley start again? Have you considered, <laughs> have you considered starting again? John Broadhead asks, Will we have to wait for suspensions or injuries before Michael Heffaly starts a game? Why, John, would you pick him when we've won four games and drawn one in the top of the league? Well, I've just picked him before now. So John says you've got it all wrong, David Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> Irate and disgusted of Huddersfield. <laughs> uh, to be fair, John, I understand your question. Uh, but, for example, he, uh, F, he is a real competitor and he shows in every training that he is a competitor and, uh, and, and a guy who really likes to wear this shirt. But unfortunately, uh, at the moment, uh, or unfortunately, uh, I'm happy that we at the moment have uh, two really strong centre-backs uh, who, uh, yeah, who, who, uh, who perform, uh, who has a good harmony together. And uh, at the moment, I feel no pressure to, to change something on this position. But uh, as you said, right, uh, there will be uh, this moments over the season if it was if it will be injury suspension, or maybe that I have the feeling somebody uh, is tired uh, and we have to change something. Everybody knows uh, I'm not afraid uh, to do uh, rotation in the right moment. Uh, then he will get uh, his chance for sure because he shows every single training uh, that he that he compete for this shirt uh, and when he get his chance uh, like he did against Aston Villa <laughs> he delivered uh, and for example uh, when we played Liverpool uh, on this Friday he, he played strong as well so I'm in a very comfortable position that I know uh, I have very strong centre backs and uh, don't forget. Uh, Jon Stankovic, the very young one, uh, who, is, who is very, very good as well. So, uh, on this position, uh, we are very comfortable and, and I'm very happy uh, that I have this competition here. To um, just continue on uh, John's very positive thread there, um, <laughs> what happened at Shrewsbury, David? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, 
at the end, it's it's it's, it's very easy. Uh, we we didn't touch the ball, and then we were one one minute back. Uh, this wasn't all right. Uh, and then we played for. Uh, the rest of the first half, uh, in my opinion, some very good football, where we have to score more than uh, only one game. And in the second half, uh, we started uh, uh, to panic, to, to maybe feel some pressure, because we are the championship club, and uh, this is only the League One club. And uh, then, then we lost the control, and we did some uh, stupid things, uh, what uh, we've not spoken about it. Uh, this this showed us that uh, against every opponent you can uh, get some problems if we if if you don't do uh, what what you what you spoke about what is your what is your match plan and uh, uh, this this caused us some problems. Uh, I was very angry after this game because I don't have a problem. Okay, maybe I have a problem to lose a game, but. I always say to my players, I don't have a problem to this game. Uh, if the opponent, if, if we do everything right, if we do everything what we've spoken about, if we work as hard as we can, uh, and then we, we lose a game because maybe the opponent is better, but normally when we do everything right, should not happen, but maybe the referee whistled in the wrong moment, or we only hit the post, the bar, whatever. So it's football, you can lose a game, but this is the problem, but you always have to make sure that you that you work as hard as you can and that you do everything in detail right uh, what you've spoken about. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. miss this, uh, then it's not acceptable because we are professionals, we prepare ourselves for, for every single game as good as we can and uh, then we have to make sure that we make these details right. And if you then uh, lose a game, okay, uh, uh, shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> does not happen this afternoon. <laughs> We'll have, a, we'll have a, one or two more questions, then we'll allow you for a comfort break and uh, perhaps go and spend a few quid at the bar to help a transfer fund for the window. <laughs> uh, so we'll two questions, then we'll, uh, we'll just have a quick break. It will only be a quick break. Yes, young man there. Ollie, it's Ollie, uh, David and me. Um, anyone coming from Acuan Alts? And uh, seeing as that guy from Bristol City went £15 million, what's his price? Ollie asked, did anybody come in for Naki Wells in the transfer window? And if the block at Bristol City is worth £15 million, what do we reckon? <laughs> <laughs> Priceless. Um, David told me very, very clearly that Naki Wells um, cannot be sold. Um, if we want to. Um, get to where we want to get to, then in the short term we've got to be aware he's got two years left on his contract, so uh, they can't approve him with us. As the contract ticks down, then the cards get transferred over to Naki. So we've got to be very mindful of that. Um, but at the same time, the reason why um, Codger went for 15 million, or 11 plus 4 or whatever, is because strikers are very few and far between. We had a striker which I would have expected people would like. So we had him, we made a fantastic start to the season. David said to me very clearly, um, Naki is a player which he wants this season, and as chairman, um, <coughs> I've sold players before and justified it, but I did have a slight feeling that if we had sold Naki in this window, it would have been a resemblance of going back to this. <laughs> it would have been very similar to Stuart, to be fair. Um, and as chairman, you know what about David? Um, so for me, we have to do everything we can to keep him. So um, you know, David said, "Don't sell him." We didn't sell him. Simple as that. Dean, if you don't mind saying, the the question though as well was, was there any interest in him? I'm sure there was plenty of interest. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, when when people make tentative inquiries and people did make tentative inquiries. Then the price we said um, we would want for him. Um, I'm not sure anybody would ever want to pay that. Um, so that's how you put people off, to be fair. Um, but at the same time, he made it very clear to Naki Wells and he made it very clear to all the clubs that we didn't want to sell him here. Simple as that. And David, just to clarify, Naki is very happy being a Huddersfield Town player. 
Yeah, I think this uh, uh, came too short in this, uh, in this discussion and as well in the last four, uh, few weeks. Uh, Naki never knocked on my door and said, uh, boss, I'd like to leave. Never. So always when I've spoken with him, uh, uh, and okay, uh, it was easy because uh, we won game after game in this period. Uh, uh, he was happy to be a part of this, of, of, of this positive atmosphere, of, of this feeling that we... Uh, now are on our way, so there was no real reason um, why uh, why he should leave. So he never knocked on my door, he never asked uh, is there any chance. Uh, so for me to be fair, this was never uh, part of my head um, that we will uh, sell Naki uh, and he never asked uh, if there is an opportunity for him. So he is still happy, he is uh, um, uh, very hungry, very greedy. He has a real competitor at the moment as well, uh, because I think uh, we should not forget that uh, Elias Kashunga uh, did an excellent job since he arrived, uh, uh, scored two goals, uh, uh, gave two assists, and is a, is a, is a real hard worker, um, which I like. So we have on this comp uh, position uh, a real competition as well. Uh, another uh, position um, where I'm very happy uh, that they have to uh, uh, challenge every single day on the training pitch, and and they have to deliver uh, every single uh, game um, to, to keep the shirt. Last question before we have a break. You've asked one, sir, so if you don't mind, I'm going to go to the gentleman wearing the Ray Wilson Huddersfield Town third kit. Yes, sir. Uh, Well, was it, are you sure it was Naki Wells? That's the other thing I'd say, because there's plenty of fake Twitter accounts. It, I mean, the question can be to either of you. The gentleman's asking, um, allegedly, at the transfer window time, Naki Wells' Twitter account started following Leeds United. Is that just a wind-up, or is it a fake account? People in front are saying they think it's a fake account, mate, so I've no idea. So. I heard he did it by accident, then unfollowed straight after, that's what I've heard. Yeah, well, as far as I'm concerned, I haven't got a clue what you're talking about, so... <laughs> you don't like tweeting, Dee? I have a tweeter, a family tweeter. <laughs> Dear me. <laughs> Let's try and answer, finish with a question because that, that was uh, not quite a question, no disrespect, mate. So uh, we'll go to the gentleman who had his hand up. Yes, sir. I was going to say, David, John Pickford again, what on earth did Mr. Kachunga do at his last club wrong? What did Elias Kachunga do wrong at his last club for him to be now at Huddersfield Town? I know what you mean. Uh, uh, and to be fair, if if he uh, if he had performed in, in the last season uh, like he's able to perform, he will not be a player uh, of Huddersfield Town. So um, I think we, we should not forget that he is uh, still only 20, 23, I think. So still a young player. Uh, I've spoken with him. Uh, listen, what goes wrong? I know you uh, since six, seven years. Uh, we had uh, two years before you had an unbelievably good season in the Bundesliga with Paderborn. Um, unfortunately, uh, the club got relegated, but he was outstanding uh, in this season. This was why uh, Ingolstadt bought you for uh, 1.5 million, uh, uh, the highest uh, ever paid signing uh, for Ingolstadt in the Bundesliga. So, what goes wrong then in this season? You only had, I don't know, eight or ten, ten games, uh, uh, most of them as a substitution. And, uh, he is very self self critical self critical uh, or he was he was very self critical in this moment and he said yeah maybe I took it too easy I thought uh, uh, highest highest ever signing 1.5 million uh, I've done my job and then he he, he lost maybe the first uh, four or eight weeks um, he, he took it too easy and uh, then he he passed the train we say in Germany. Uh, and he never uh, catch it up again. And uh, if you are then maybe uh, um, not in the mind of a manager and uh, your, your team is successful, what Ingolstadt was in the last season in the Bundesliga, it's not easy to come back into the team. And uh, so uh, this was the reason why he missed um, nearly one year of his career. Uh, what is good for us, I think, because uh, if you as a young player made a big mistake 
uh, and you realize that you did something wrong, uh, I think this uh, can push you forward and it looks like that uh, exactly this uh, moment uh, or momentum now we catch up. Uh, we have Elias Koshunga who knows uh, he missed one year of his career and it was his own fault and um, now he likes to push forward and uh, is coming back to his quality. <coughs> I make it five past eight, ladies and gents. We're going to start to get a quarter past, just ten minutes, so please try and get back to your seats by quarter past. Thank you.